So just a few words about myself. Uh, I'm the business applications MVP and working with those power platform tools for over three years. So I quite got sunk into. And well, just long story short, if you want to know more about me or learn something about my work, what I'm doing, where I'm contributing, simply uh, follow my my alias on ak.ms slash Porsche deck and there you find all the hyperlinks, all uh, social media contacts that you need to stay in touch with me. So that's it about the slide. So we're going to switch now into something uh, different. So from Power Apps and all these cool stuff around Power Apps UIs, which I really loved, to something more near the automation, more near the processes that I love. I know that most of you who are on the call is aware that we have this Power Virtual Agents edition where we can build the no code chatbots that can interact with our internal employees, with our customers, so they can be public facing. I know this costs quite a lot because like $1,000 per one per 100 sessions or the other way around. Nevertheless, uh, this is a cool tool because you can actually create great chatbots that can really help your business work more smooth and can just put a lot of workload from your customer services, your contact centers uh, onto the chatbots so that customers can use them to ask questions. Now, what I want to show you is that when we want to use these chatbots internally, we can actually, or even not internally, but if we, if we want to use the chatbot with an OAuth 2.0 provider, then we can actually get the user context. And when speaking about Microsoft, this provider is obviously Azure AD. So like in my case, when I start a conversation with the bot and I ask, um, uh, can you show, sorry, me, my data, for example. And then because this triggers a topic where bot is actually requesting me to provide my error token, therefore it is asking me first to log in. So because now I'm in a very private session, therefore I will now go through the regular sign up process or authentication process. So now, and so now what is going to happen right now is I will be directed to a web page where there is a token generated, this validation code. Now, once I copy it, the bot is actually able to let's say, acknowledge that I actually got logged in. And so it was able to generate as well the bearer token, which I can later use, for example, to call graph API in the context or on behalf of the user with which the bot is conversating. So now I'm going to ask, show my tasks to check. It was an error. OK, but. <laughs> maybe there is going to be something about my data. Right, possibly uh, general researcher has no tasks assigned, so there are no pending tasks. But for example, when I asked about my data, uh, it was able to get the information that the user's name who is now conversating is general researcher, and I'm actually that user's manager. Now, how was it actually done? How we can achieve the same situation? Because that is really useful when you want to create a bot that is actually being used internally. And I bet that there are going even more awesome things to be announced during Ignite, but let's say, keep, keep fingers crossed uh, on, on what announcements we're gonna hear. Nevertheless, today, when you want to go and authenticate a user, you need to first go under the authentication uh, setting in your Pavito agents. And there you need to fill a lot of fields actually with information that is coming from Azure AD. Now, on this web page here that is present inside this configuration page, you have a very detailed walkthrough on what information is required in each of these fields in regards to Azure ID. So there are those, uh, there are those examples just for the Azure ID. However, as said, you can actually use any other OAuth provider. It doesn't have to be actually Azure ID. So now once you do have all this information provided here and configured, then you're able to use this authentication. Now, once you want to put that authentication in your topic, let me just go directly to designing canvas or authoring canvas. 
then within the conversation flow, you will realize that there is a new action under call and action group of activities. So besides, so besides all these flows that you can choose from, there should be as well an action that is called authenticate. Oh yes, there is there is one. So it, yeah, it has to be like the the last action in the in the set of conver in the flow of the conversation. So now once I put it in, it will automatically generate me the action to authenticate and the branching. What should happen once the user is logged in, and what should happen if the login fails? One of the outcomes of the authentication is this auth token. So that's actually the bearer token that we can use to call Graph API in the context of the user. So now once I go to a flow, and that's the example of the flow that asks, that tries to gather users, users data, then the first thing I'm doing is actually calling Graph API in the context of myself. So just calling the uh, endpoint 0, 1.0 1 .0 slash me. And then in advanced, I'm using the raw authentication and simply providing this bearer and the token that is being passed from the Parvitool agents once I call this flow. So let me show you how it works uh, in the virtual agent. So now if I'd like to, let's say here, uh, I'm just clicking too fast. If I'd like now to call an action, and then find the one that says, wow, there are so many of them, like get user info, then because I have configured the flow to actually expect that there is one input variable or input value that is called token, and therefore I need to provide here a value. And this is going to be this variable that stores the bearer token. Now, what is also important um, in this uh, authentication approach that we have in Power Tool Agents is that so this is also um, a global variable, and therefore, even if I go into a topic where I don't explicitly or explicitly put this authenticate action, but I would like actually, all right, now there's some bad things happening into the conversation flow. Right? So when I, if I would like to use this action here, sorry, this token here, because it is still available. It is, as you can see, a global variable that can be used by any both. Therefore, if I start this conversation, let me save it so that I will be able to trigger this topic to test it. Hey, Tomas, for those folks who haven't configured the auth on this before, you showed the page where to do it. How long does it typically take you to walk through that? This is uh, like 10 minutes maximum because, uh, all right, so it doesn't work yet to trigger this topic. It maybe needs some time to get. Let me just show you in a moment. So essentially in 10 minutes, you can go from having yes, because, nothing to getting set up and now you've got yes, the, because uh, the token. Basically, because basically all the information that we need to pass in here is actually in our HRD and these that are, let's say general, like those patterns or the templates for strings, they can be directly copied from the documentation. So the only thing that you actually need to provide is to go to Azure AD, which I have opened over here. And then create new application in your Azure, uh, well, in your Azure ID actually. Then you need to grant this uh, application, well, open ID um, permission and user read all. This is on the application level and grant is admin consent. And then once you grant this, those um, application permissions, you need to simply go into certificates to generate the new certificate that you need to copy over to the uh, configuration page. Plus, you need to go to overview to copy the application client ID, so that one. 
And now once all is done, then or you are simply home. So this is actually the only the only thing that you are requested to do regarding this configuration. The rest is actually the information can copy directly from the documentation. So that's really, really easy. And now once this is done, that should work. OK, but it doesn't. But nevertheless, you have to trust me because those are ah, OK, because the trigger phrases were not saved. OK. So I can remember that this test topic doesn't have any authentication action added directly. It is just using these global variable. And therefore, even if I now start uh, trigger, it will ask me to authenticate, right? Because this is how the global variables work. So they are just navigating the user to the place where that variable is going to be initialized. So in this case, this all works fine. So right now it is just going to call the graph API via the Power Automate and should get me back the information about myself. And possibly it did, but I didn't add any action to actually write the output from the Power Automate. So it worked. The authentication went smoothly. There is no action needed because the variable is in place. So this is actually how you can use the authentication in virtual agents. And then the one last thing I wanted to show you is about um, the situation when you add your bot into Teams. So therefore, if you have a bot in Teams, then unfortunately it doesn't read user's context. That's again, I hope this is going to change after Ignite. Let's see what, what they're coming up with. But if I said, um, Then again, the first, no, that's the wrong, that's the wrong topic. Uh, let me just jump over. Over. So I'll start with that previous uh, question. Right, so in here also, even though I'm logged into Microsoft Teams, let it be Microsoft Teams desktop or the web browser version, then I still need to log in because this session that the bot is actually running is not authenticated. So the user here is just an unknown persona and the bot is not having an access to my information within Teams. Although, as you saw, this uh, authentication was faster. Now it worked was faster because I wasn't actually requested to copy paste this uh, confirmation code. It was just once I hit to login, it took the credentials or my contacts from the browser, so from Microsoft Teams. So this is a little bit faster and uh, easier for the user. And so that's it. Can you add this? I, I have a question. I've never tried yep. this before. I'm curious. So if, if you're running in one of these and you pull back that uh, property that gives you the bearer token, can you go like and invoke another flow and throw the bearer token at that flow and do that action on behalf of that user in the other flow? Yes. Okay. So what, once you get the bearer token and well, it is its expiration date is like, the time is I think 15 minutes or something. So as long as the bearer token is expired, you can actually use it across different calls to Graph API. Well, mm -hmm. you know, you only, you only need to be sure that user has an access to those specific maybe Graph API areas or, or data. Absolutely. Thank you for showing us that. That's so helpful. And it's so easy too, right? Just go set it up and then boom, you've got your auth, your token, and you're off and running. Right, um, Daniel, you asked if we can use this as another method of MFA. I doubt. So this is not for authentication of a user to systems. This is rather to 
well, okay, sort of authentication, but you need to be authenticated in the first place to be able to use this security, I mean, secure calls to Graph API from PVA. So it, it's not meant to be the authentication endpoint or, or sort of. But you can, if you have your own OAuth 2.0 provider and it's working with the cloud applications, you can obviously use it as the authentication provider for Pivotal agents as well. All right. Okay. So thank you very much. Very good. Thank you for being here and showing that to us. Thank you.